Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to set up Firebase Cloud Messaging in an Android application using Android Studio. Also, I will show you how to send push notifications from Firebase and how to receive the notifications on the Android application. So first, let's create a new project. Here, I will select Empty Activity and let's click on Next. So I will call it my restaurant application and I will use the Java language. So this is the minimum SDK that I will use. Now let's click on finish. Now the project has been created. So let's set up the Firebase cloud messaging. So let's click on tools, then Firebase. And here we have to click on cloud messaging. Now let's click on Setup Firebase Cloud Messaging and let's click on Connect to Firebase. But here we obtain this error. This is because we need to configure the application. So let's click on OK. Then let's click on this button. It is called Project Structure. Then let's click on Modules. Then let's select APP. Then let's select Properties. And in the Compile SDK version, we need to select a recent version. And here we need to select at least SDK 28. But in my case, I will select SDK 31. Also in the Build Tools, I will select SDK 31. Now let's click on OK. And let's wait few seconds till the end of the synchronization. Now let's click on Connect to Firebase. And here we need to build the application. So let's click on build. Now the project has been built correctly. So let's click on connect to Firebase. In this window, we have to create a new project. So let's click on add project. In this window, let's click on continue. Then in this window, we can disable Google Analytics, which is not required. So let's disable it and let's click on Create Project. Now let's click on Continue. Then let's click on Connect. And now the application is connected to Firebase correctly, so we can close this page. Now we need to add uh, the Firebase Cloud Messaging to the application. So let's click on this button and let's click on Accept Changes. Of course, we need to wait a few seconds till the end of the synchronization. Now Firebase Cloud Messaging is set up correctly. So we need to obtain the device registration token. So let's scroll down. And here we can click on any links which will take us to the documentation website. So let's click on this link, for example. In this page, we have to click on set up an Android client. Now let's scroll down. And here we need to access the device registration token. So let's scroll down. And let's copy the source code. So let's click on this button. Now let's go back to Android Studio. So here in the onCreate method, we need to paste the source code. So first let's hide this area. And after set content view, we can paste the source code. Now we need to import the missing classes. Also, we can replace the log class with system out println. So we can remove this and you can call system out println instead. Also, we can remove the second parameter. Then here, let's remove this class and let's use system out println. We can also remove this message variable and replace it with the token, which is the device registration token. So let's remove this line. And let's replace message by token. 
Also, we need to import the toast class. And here, let's replace the message by token. We can also add a description of this token. Also, it is possible to display this token into any text. So let's go to the layout. Let's replace this constraint layout by a linear layout. So let's make a right click, then convert view, then linear layout, then apply. We can also modify the orientation of this linear layout. So let's select it. And in the orientation, let's select vertical. So let's modify the text of this text view. And let's write device registration token. Now we need to add a new edit text. So let's go to text, then plain text, and let's drag and drop it. Also, I want to provide this edit text with the full height. So let's go to layout weight and let's provide the value 1, for example. Now let's provide this edit text with an ID. So I will give it the ID et like edit text token. Let's click on refactor. And also I want to make this edit text multi-line. So I need to find the input type property. So this is input type. I have to expand it. Then I have to select text multiline. Now let's go back to our main activity. And let's create a global variable of type edit text. Let's call it et token. Then let's initialize this variable. So I will initialize it after set content view. Then I will fill this edit text with the registration token in the onComplete method. So just here after the toast, I will fill this edit text. Now let's run the application. So this is the device registration token that allows Firebase to send notifications to this application. So let's copy this token. Then let's go to Firebase console. So here let's type Firebase console. Then let's click on this link. It is Firebase console. Now let's select our application, which is this one. So let's click on it. And here let's scroll down. And let's click on Cloud Messaging. Then let's click on Send your first message. So here we can close this notification. And to send a new notification, we have to provide the title. So let's call it, for example, First Test. And let's provide the message that will be sent to the Android application. Let's write, for example, this is my first test. Now let's click on send test message. And here we need to provide the token. So here let's paste the token. And let's click on this add button. Now let's click on test. But we can see that this application did not receive any notification. This is because the notification will appear when the application is in the background. So let's put this application in the background. Now let's send the test message again. Let's select this token and let's click on test. And this time we obtain this notification. And here we have the message, this is my first test. So we can remove this notification like this. 
Now I will show you how to receive the message when the application is in the foreground. So let's go to the documentation website. And here let's click on receive messages. And in this page we can see that if we want to receive the messages we need to use a service that extends this class. So let's copy the name of this class. Let's go back to Android Studio. We can stop the application. And let's create a new class. So let's make a right click on this package. Then new. Then Java class. And here let's add extends Firebase messaging service. Then let's import this class. Now we need to add this service to the application manifests. So let's go back to the documentation website. Let's scroll down. And let's copy this code. Let's go back to Android Studio. Then let's open the manifests file. And just after the activity, I can paste the source code that I have copied. Of course, I need to remove the Java word. Now let's close this file. And let's go back to the documentation website. So let's scroll down. And we need to implement this method. It is on message received. So let's copy this source code. And let's paste it in the service class. Of course, we need to import the missing classes. Also, we can remove the log class and we can replace it with systemoutprintln. Then we can remove this parameter. Also, I will remove these statements. Then I will replace the log class with systemoutprintln. Then I can implement this method to display a toast to the user. So let's copy this method. Let's call it just here. So let's provide it with the from. And with the body. Then let's implement it. Then let's display a toast. So let's import the missing classes. And let's run the application. Now the application is in the foreground. So let's try to send a push notification to this application. So let's click on send test message. And here we can see that the token did not change. So let's select it and let's click on test. And here we obtain this toast. Now I will show you how to show the notification in the notification area. So let's go back to the documentation website. And here let's scroll down. And let's click on this link. So this is the on message received. If I scroll down, I can see that there is the method send notification that allows the application to display a notification in the notification area. So I need to copy the source code of this method. So let's scroll down. And let's copy this method. Let's go back to Android Studio and let's create a new method called send notification which receives only one parameter. Now we need to import the missing classes. Then for the channel ID we can provide any value. So I will remove this function 
and I will provide any value so it will be of type string let's import the other classes now we can provide an icon for this notification so let's create a new icon so let's expand a resource then let's make a right click on this resource folder then new then image asset so in this window i will select the icon type i will select notification icons then i will select the type clip art then i will click on this button in this field let's write message and let's press enter so we obtain this icon i will select it and let's click on ok also i can modify its name so i will call it ic state notification let's copy this name and let's click on next then let's click on finish so here i can use the icon that i have created instead of this value also i can modify the title so let's remove this method and let's provide a title to this notification for example let's write my new notification let's import the other classes now let's call this method when we receive a new notification so let's copy the name of this method and let's call it in the on message received so it requires only one parameter which is the message body so let's copy this and let's paste it here now let's run the application but first let's stop it now let's run it again So this is the registration token it does not change now let's click on send test message and let's select this token let's click on test so here we have this toast but also we have this notification and here we have this notification with the icon that i have created we can remove this notification now let's put the application in the background and let's send a new notification and this is the notification 